we have already studied the topic of lexical scoping but we're gonna study it again because I'm about to talk about closures in upcoming videos and the reason why I'm talking about closure because some of the libraries use closures a lot like for example Redux which is considered as tough because it uses a whole lot of closures oh yes in case I forgot that again hey again Welcome to the JavaScript series and you know what to do with the YouTube, everybody says that, hit that button. So that part is all done. The reason why I'm talking about again on this uh, lexical scoping is because lexical scoping is nothing extraordinary. It just is a classical way of writing JavaScript. For years we have been writing code just with this exact same syntax. And the reason why in just the last video I said that please go ahead and take a look on how functional programming actually works. In the recent years, we have used functional programming like the next nature. And that's why we forgot that how the classical JavaScript actually works because this new way of writing the code actually uh, leaves something behind which is almost similar to pointer-ish approach, but I won't, con I won't be confusing you that much. So, okay, let's go ahead and see how the lexical scoping works. Uh, giving you the very classic example. Again, this example is coming up from a documentation, so you're gonna see this a lot. And the reason, I could have said this one as hello world as well, but I'm gonna still gonna call this one as init. Init is a shortcut for initialization, and the reason why I'm using it, because later on, if you visit any other Medium article or the official documentation, you understand it, what it is actually saying. I could have definitely taken another example, but I'm explicitly intentionally taking this one okay so how does this work uh, for example we got a simple first name here that name is let's just say Hathesh. so we know that the scope of this variable is inside the function so as soon as the function is going to be called the execution context of the function rolls at the top of this global executional context of JavaScript and even if I come here and define another function I'm gonna say just like uh, say first name and that's what it does and once you actually have this one this actually just go ahead and logs uh, this dot first name okay there we go nice and easy and even if I don't say this dot first name what is going to happen when I say just the first name now this is what I want to do here and just after this I'm gonna simply say first name and just go like this okay right now what is going to happen nothing because nobody has called this function when I come up and say init and I run this now we have seen this that this is a very classic way of writing the JavaScript first and foremost as soon as this call is being made that means you're calling this function on top of the global executional context this init context is gonna come up the init will try to run, it will declare a variable. So we learned about the undefined and stuff already. And then the function is being declared, which is available. And as soon as you call this say first name, on top of this init executional context, another context is gonna mount up and that will be say first name. As soon as the first name is said, uh, that executional context will go away. And then since this functional function has already run, this init context will also be removed and we got, again, back to normal days. Now this is the normal way. This is the lexical scoping where the scope of this first name is defined that, yeah, once everything is done, if I just go ahead and try to say that log, uh, let me just say log, and I try to just simply say first name, I don't have this first name available to me. Okay, bad. That's that's not the file I wanted to run. Okay, and it's into 05 and uh, 04. And there we go. I don't have this first name. So if I copy this, come on, that was really bad. Save that. And after a couple of struggles, we are able to run this one. And notice it says, hey, what is going on in here? Console.log, first name. But where is this first name? You never actually declared it. So as soon as this thing is all done, the context is over, nobody knows what this first name is. But what happens into the closure is a different style of writing the code. When you actually hold this entire function as a variable, you do something like this. You define var, uh, something like nnn, something like this. Then things are different. And even if you declare the function, not in the functional approach, but rather in an approach where you hold it into a variable, then the approach is totally different, things are different, and then we move into the territory of closure. 
a fair warning straightforwardly here, closure is not anything which is like super easy and I can sugarcoat it. It is definitely a little bit tricky for beginners to understand, but we gotta do it because a whole lot of libraries are gonna become easier once you understand the concept of this. So again, all I'm saying is just look at this very simple code and just try to imagine where, how long this first name is gonna be available. And uh, it is available on this line number three to line number this because already uh, we have this uh, init context, init execution context mounted up. That's why I can drill down below and can find it up. But once this entire thing is over, it doesn't really know what this first name is. That's the whole uh, gist of this entire video. So go ahead, think about it a little bit, and we're gonna catch up in the next video. And finally, we're gonna discuss about closure. Don't stress it out, it's not that much hard. It's just easy, it just is a way of thinking. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.